So viewers, are you ready for this? I know that there are a ton of videos out there telling you about thrifting and reselling and things like that. And they go through the racks and they're showing you all the amazing finds and they're saying, hey, this is how you do it. But they're not really giving you true tips and tricks that you can use to find some amazing thrift gems. No gatekeeping here. I'm about to take you with me. Let's go thrifting. Sometimes thrifting can be a little difficult and a little overwhelming for some people. All right, so we arrived. Thank you so much for coming along with me. Before we go in, there's a couple of pointers I want you to know. When you are going to look for items for a specific aesthetic, make sure that you keep those items in mind. Have a list of the items that you want to get or the things that you're looking for so that you do not get distracted. There are so many things inside that are going to catch your attention. And sometimes it can be overwhelming because they can have overcrowded booths and be huge and have an extensive amount of vendors. And all of the vendors sell different things, but you are gonna see that there are some commonalities. Like you will find some kind of vintage items in almost every single booth. You will find more than likely tiny little trinkets that might catch your eye and you're like, ooh, that's cute and ooh, I would like that. But it has nothing to do with what you're looking for. So make sure that you're spending your money on what really matters or what really counts for you. If you're okay with going in and spending your money Frivolously, <laughs> but um, what I will tell you is that I keep in mind the things that I'm looking for. For instance, I'm redoing my room to make a common room, and so my thing right now that I'm looking for are like little small the, the irons that are very vintage. They're iron irons. Okay, follow along with me. I also would love to find like an antique mirror in and brush. My bathroom. Oh. So those are some items that I'm looking for. Another pointer that I have is most people, when you go into the any store, will turn right automatically. I don't know. It's just like more inclined for us to go to the right. I'm going to suggest that you go to the left. The left vendor booths are generally cheaper, right? They don't get as much traffic, so they sometimes have better deals, okay? So that's like an insider tip. Try going to the left instead of venturing to the right, like we kind of do. Take notice of it. Next time you walk into a store, which direction do you go if you don't have something specific in mind? Like if you know you're going to Target to the grocery section and the grocery section is on the left, then by all means, you're going to go to the left. But what about those times when you are going into the store and you really don't have any direction of what you're going or what you're looking for? You're just kind of going in to kind of peruse the aisles, look and see which direction you go. Do you go right or do you go left? And let me know. So anyway, let's just, you know, hey, let's get this started. All right. Okay, now before you call me out and say, hey, that was not on your list. I'm just showing you some things that I found on my venture. But come on, that's whimsical. It's like London aristocracy. Put on your red hat. You know, grandma's in the back of the church. Come on, that's cute. All right, so you will find some amazing pieces like I mentioned. That is so cute. But don't forget to keep in mind that point about being distracted. 
I got so distracted seeing this huge crocheted bee that I literally flipped my camera and now we're going sideways. They see me rolling, they hating, trying to catch me riding dirty. As you see, I put the iron back. I'll explain why a little later. But while you're walking around looking for things for your specific reason, be sure to keep an open mind and go slow. You may come across some hidden treasures like this sign. This sign reminds me from a scene from a Harry Potter movie and I'll try to insert a clip here. But I also want you to keep in mind that you can use your own creative juices let them flow because you never know when you may come across a piece that you can actually utilize and do something with like this and you can put all kind of little bottles that you get especially if you do those subscription boxes and they give you those little valves to put your potions in see just be ingenious and use your creativity i like that Don't just go to find things, go to find ideas. Look at this crest shape on this book. Wonderful idea, this is a hollowed out book. You can open it up and store things inside. That's a wonderful decor piece. Look at different ways that things are presented to you and you can take that and incorporate it and place it in your own style. Like that cabinet right there. Look at that cabinetry, that's just shelves. And they added some pieces from Lowe's to make it into a little house. That's very cute. Do a wide span of the area. That way you don't waste your time. You can kind of do like a 360 and then go in the area where you see a few things or you see um, something that catches your eye and that way you don't waste your time. colorful book cut pictures that you might see you can cut the picture out put it in a wonderful frame and bam you just have decor something to display in your house that has wonderful pictures to go with it and it's even more vintage as something Paper 
All right. As I kind of get a little excited about the 75% off books, which, by the way, I have a plethora of decor ideas that you can do with the books that I will be sharing in a future video. But in the meantime, a couple of pointers. Just because you come in with a list does not necessarily mean that you're going to find everything on your list. Do not count that as a failure. Count that as, ooh, I get to go shopping again to find something probably better than what you even had in mind. So just keep that in mind. Also, remember that iron that I found, the vintage iron that was quite heavy? About $25, I believe, was the sale price. Well, that wasn't my price point, so I didn't pick it up. I decided to wait and see if I can find something better. That's also an option that you have as well. You don't have to pick up everything that you find and take it home. You can peruse and see if another vendor or another area has a better price. Or you can just wait. There's nothing wrong with waiting. But anyway, let's get out of here before I end up buying a bunch of books. that was a lot of fun okay um <laughs> a couple of more tips i don't know if you caught that about the mirror beautiful on the outside no mirror on the opposite side no glass just a holder for the glass to go into oh i gotta cut that air up it is hot in this southern state okay anyway another couple of tips to remember is um go around the perimeter you find a lot of sales around the perimeter of the stores. Um, I'm gonna give you a whole lot of other tips that I found along the way, but I'm gonna leave you with one big one. You see something that you really like. Go to the counter and ask the cashier if she can text the vendor to see if they can offer you a discount. Remember that they're there to sell their merchandise. They're renting a booth, they have to have the um, materials to put in their booth their main thing is to make a sale so don't be afraid to have them just say hey I really like this piece but a little out of my price range you might not even have to say that but you might say that and then say hey could you just text the vendor and see if they're offering a discount on this item give it a shot and see what happens but it's hot and I, I gotta get in some AC. It was nice inside, but you have to walk from the inside to the outside and then back in your car to cool off. And it is 108 degrees outside, okay? So, uh, and then you pop into this little hot car. Hot. So anyway, I'll see you when I show you what I got.